Can you install Windows apps on Linux using bottles? That is the advice that Linux people give you if you're trying to switch to Linux from Windows for the first time. So I want to give this a try and install some Windows apps to see if this actually works. I'm approaching this as a typical new Linux user would, someone with zero or limited knowledge, and I'm gonna see if it's simple to do, or do we have to start jumping through hoops to get anything to actually work? Let's start with a brand new installation of Mint. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into software, and software is your app store. This is where you find all the apps that actually work on Linux, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna type in there bottles because that is what we want to install so there it is it discovered it you're gonna click on it and then we're simply going to click the big green button called install right it will tell us what is going to be installed and we're just going to click on continue and that's pretty much it click on launch and now your bottles is actually installed and welcome to bottles run windows software on linux perfect that's exactly what we want go through this little screen it does a quick update at the very end and now we're ready to roll. Right, click on start using bottles. Now this is the first time we're using it, so we're gonna click on bottles at the top, and we're gonna click on create new bottles. And now we have to give our bottles a name. I'm just gonna call it Windows Apps or something equally as descriptive. And it's a choice. Is the environment gonna be an application environment? Is it gonna be a gaming environment? Or is it gonna be custom? And if it's custom, you can play with all these settings. But we're newbies, so we're gonna start from fresh. We're gonna make it an application environment, and we're gonna click on Create. Then Bottle says, hey, this could take a while, because what it's doing is actually setting up the environment for us to be able to run those Windows applications. I'm not gonna make you watch this. This does take a little bit of time, but at the end of the day, once it's done, you're gonna get this message, Bottle Created, and click on Close. All right, now that it's done, we have run executable as an option. We also have add shortcuts and install programs. When you click on run executable, it actually runs the exe. When you click on add to shortcuts, it adds the shortcuts to the program list and install programs. That's basically installs programs that are created by the community. I'm gonna show you all that shortly. Right, now that this is set up, we can start installing some apps. I want to start off by installing a favorite Windows text editing app that many of us geeks actually use. And I'm referring to the Notepad++. So let's go find it. So I'm on my normal web browser. There is Notepad++. I'm going to click on that download button and look at that. It's a .exe file. This is a Windows program and you can see it under my downloads folder. And when we click on run executable within bottles, you get this little message. Bottles is running in a sandbox, a restricted permission environment needed to keep you safe. Good. Okay, click on dismiss, and then let's go to my downloads folder. And there we go. I'm going to select under the supported executable. I'm going to click on all files, and there is my exe. Double click on that. And look at that. That is your normal Windows installation that you would recognize if you install Windows. It even has the program files as you would expect under your Windows environment. I'm gonna leave it as the default. I'm just gonna go next, 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 all the way to the installation and see what happens. It says it's finished. Run Notepad, yep, let's click on it. Click on finish and there we go. Notepad++ is running in Linux. This is a Windows program running perfectly fine in our Linux environment because we're running it through bottles. So that absolutely works. And if I need to run it in the future, it's under my shortcuts, under my programs, and I just click the play button and it pops up. That worked pretty nicely. Now, of course, I could have looked for an alternative to Notepad++, just like there is GIMP, which is an alternative to Photoshop but I like Notepad++ and I wanna keep using it, so now I can. Okay, well, since that ran an EXE installation with no problems, let's step it up and go to something a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna try installing an accounting software called QuickBooks. Does that work? Okay, back to my Firefox. I'm gonna look for QuickBooks download. We want to install the EXE file. Okay, and there is the EXE being downloaded as we speak. Let's see what happens. Now, this is a much more complicated program than Notepad++. So this is where it's gonna be super interesting to see how it handles that. All right, download is complete. Let's go to my WinApps. Let's click on Run Executable. 
And once again, let's go back to the downloads folder. And there is my QuickBooks Pro Sub 2024. Click on EXE and okay, extracting the files. So far, so good. That looks good. Promising 75%. Okay, and 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 now nah, black screen. Okay. Uh oh, QuickBook installation is not responding. All right, let's click on wait. Still black screen. And yeah, that did not work. All right, let's force the quit. So there's something called dependencies, and maybe we need to look into that. And essentially what dependencies are, they are a resource that improves compatibility of Windows software. And if you scroll down this massive list, you can see some are fonts and some are essentials. So which ones do you install? Do you install all of them? Do you install some of them? I just don't know. So the best thing that I'm going to be able to do is head over to winehq.org and let's go into the search button on this website, type in QuickBooks, and let's see what people are saying, whether this works or doesn't, and what dependencies it would need. So it starts at 2001. The one we've installed is the 2024 version. Let's go down to the bottom of the list. I don't see a 2024 version. I see a version 6.0. I don't know what that is. I see a whole bunch of stuff saying it's garbage and which basically means you have no chance of getting this thing to work. Well, that was disappointing. If you're a QuickBook user, you cannot simply install it and you would have to use the web browser version of QuickBooks. Now, maybe with enough time, you could find a workaround and maybe someone in the comments will even give you some tips, but just using bottles to easily run Windows software on Linux with bottles doesn't work. All right, let's try something else that's maybe less complicated. What about Netflix? I mean, surely there's a Netflix app, maybe not. How about Hulu app? Also not. Okay, let's go see if we can do our own way using the Windows installation. So download the Netflix app. Let's go search for that. And here you can see we have a bunch of options available on many devices. We have Apple phones, tablets, Android phones or tablets, Windows tablets. We've got a Windows 10 or later, but still not Linux. Okay, so let's click on the way to download it. Oh, here we go. It says from the Microsoft Store. Now, obviously, there is no Microsoft Store on Linux, so we're pretty much dead in the water when it comes to downloading Netflix official app. All right, what about just logging in? I mean, can we just do that and watch on the browser? So let's try that. So I'm gonna put in my username and password. Oh, but look at this. You must enable DRM to play some audio or video on this page. You have to enable that. Once you do that, it's installing, I'm assuming some codecs that's required. And let's just go play a random movie here on Netflix. Um, obviously, I don't want to let this thing run for too long in case I get a copyright issue here. Okay, but that seems to work perfectly fine. All right, what about the Hulu app? Hulu app on your device. This is a device. Hopefully, oh, okay, they've got many more devices that this actually can work on. We have Android, we have Android TV, Apple TV, Chrome app, Chromecast, Echo Show. Okay, we got a whole host of these things. But you know what's absolutely missing from this list? Is Linux. So the next option you're going to have to do, and you're something you're going to have to get used to doing quite a lot, is going to Google and typing in, I need some help how to watch Hulu on Linux or how to use this application in Linux and go through a bunch of websites until you find the commands that you need to be able to get this thing to actually work. Yes, that can be super frustrating, especially when you see something like, hey, this used to work, but it just doesn't anymore. So once again, two more popular Windows apps that most of us use simply doesn't install on Linux. And yes, of course you can watch in the browser as long as you enable that DRM in Firefox, but you do not get the benefit of movies offline. And for you, that might not be an issue since you always have internet access wherever you are. For me, that's almost a deal breaker since I travel a lot and I like to have that facility. We all use our systems differently. So you got to figure out what's good for you and what works for you, as opposed to just listening to those blanket statements that everything can just be installed on Linux. Okay, but in bottles, there was an option called install programs. What does that actually do? 
Okay, well, let's click on install programs and find out. So install programs are curated by our community. And as many as they seem to be, they seem to be very much focused on the gaming side of things. There was Epic there, there is PlayStation Plus, there's Origin. Let's go see if there is Steam here as well. And yes, there is Steam. So we just have to click on the install program, this down looking arrow thing. And it's going to install the Windows installation, but within this bottle. So click on Start Installation, Installing Windows Dependencies. Great, that's exactly what we want. Click on Show Programs, and let's click on the little play button next to Steam, updating Steam packages, and I'm in. Except for this flickering thing, which I don't understand what that does, but fine. Let's click on Library, Home, maybe it will settle in. Oh, and there's my gaming library on this test account that I have on Steam. So that all seems to have popped up and I can cycle through them. So it seems that the install program that's curated by the community installs the dependencies and this stuff works. Now, I didn't install any of the games as this laptop simply doesn't have enough hard drive space. Also, as I keep saying it, I am not a gamer. So it wouldn't really be fair for me to make any comments about a game's performance. I just wanted to show you what Bottles does and clearly what it doesn't do. So when all is said and done, if you have a specific app that you absolutely need, head over to Wine, do some Google searches to see if it will work using Bottles on Linux or if other people reported it to be absolute garbage. I use Adobe products and they really don't work on Linux. And no, I don't wanna find an alternative. Now, if that's not an issue for you, perfectly fine. Now, are there any other Bottle types of container programs? Absolutely. Do they do a better job with these apps? Perhaps, but for new Linux users, Bottles is where you start before heading down that rabbit hole of terminal commands to find those workarounds. Now, if you want simple and Bottles doesn't work, you do have another option. You could run Windows in a virtual environment in Linux. So your main operating system remain Linux, but whenever you need that must have Windows app, you fire up Windows 10 inside Linux and run your app. That could be the best way to get the best of both worlds without constantly having to reboot between Windows and Linux just for that one app. Uh, let me know if you wanna see a video on how to set that up. Now, whilst you are considering making the switch to Linux, perhaps it's a good idea to check out how Microsoft is actually spying on your data right over here. Give the video a quick thumbs up before you head out and I'll see you in this video. Let's go.